AOC was on Instagram Live last night crying and recounting her experience at the Capitol. And she's gotten praise over Twitter and social media about she's such a brave young woman and oh my God, or can you hear this? And, and, and this is beautiful. And AOC is falling into the trap. She's falling into the trap where uh, she's feeding into a social media loop. A social media loop, and, and social media is dangerous in this way where uh, it it provides you with all of the commentary that you're searching for. So if you are out there, you know, searching for a sympathetic ear and you're a famous person, social media is going to give it to you. If you're looking for people to thirst over you, like uh, Chloe, uh, what's that girl named? Chloe Bailey. It'll give it to you. Social media will give you anything you're searching for if you're a celebrity. And so AOC is as much, of, she's as much a celebrity uh, as she is a congresswoman. And so she's on Instagram live crying about uh, what happened at the Capitol. And I think she needs help, right? Now, I'm someone who personally, I like AOC. I said, you know, a couple of months ago uh, that, I think it was last year, that I think AOC had a really good shot at being kind of the first female president because, number one, she's very spontaneous. Number two, uh, she's spunky. Number three, she she endorses popular uh, policies. Now, I'm not saying that these policies are are good or anything, but they're very popular. Number four, she's very attractive. And so I've been saying for a while that, yo, AOC, she has a shot to be the first female president. Amazing. But over the past year, she has been kind of uh, losing it. And it started before the Capitol. The Capitol was kind of, I think, uh, the cherry on top. But she's been kind of making statements in the press for a while now that has, that has uh, suggested to me that maybe she needs to step away from her life in Congress. I don't know if you remember this, but a, a couple of, uh, uh, I think it was last year or, or maybe uh, the year before that, she had comments about her, her uh, future in politics. And she was saying that she wasn't sure that she had a future in politics because she wasn't prepared for the, the constant attacks. She wasn't, uh, she wasn't prepared for the life that comes with being somebody that is in Congress. And that's that was my first light bulb. I said, oh, AOC's not built for this. She's really not. And seeing her behavior post the Capitol riots, whatever you want to call them, it's kind of solidified exactly, you know, what, what I've been feeling. And so my message to AOC would be, you have to get help, AOC. I was jumped. Uh, around five, six years ago. I was walking through the park on my way home from work, and I was jumped. And I, and I live in New York City. That was an extremely uh, traumatic experience for me, being jumped. It was extremely traumatic. To this day, I'm not back to normal. I, I'm not myself, so to speak. But I'm also not representing Americans uh, in Congress. And so the, the behavior that AOC is engaging in on Instagram, to me, is not cute. It's not cute. It's not enlightening. She's not brave. She needs to get help. Do you really want someone like AOC representing you in Congress? Like politicians are supposed to be clear headed. They're supposed to be looking out for the best interests of Americans uh, for the country. How can you be looking out for our best interests if you are clearly scarred by an incident? And so this was her like second or third time on Instagram live recounting her, you know, experience, and then she reveals, oh, that she's a sexual assault a survivor. And now I'm thinking to myself, so maybe what happened at the Capitol was AOC was reminded, oh, no, no, uh, 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 what happened at the Capitol, AOC kind of had like a flashback to whatever trauma she was holding on to from the time that she was sexually assaulted. And I would tell AOC, AOC, you have to get help. You do. But no, this behavior should not be uh, celebrated. It shouldn't be celebrated. It, sh it shouldn't be condoned. Uh, should we understand? Maybe, I guess, we should understand. But really, social media is not the place for you to air out trauma. It's not the place for you to air out your grievances. It's not. Do that in the confines of an office, of a therapist. Do that amongst your friends. Do that amongst your family. Social media is not the place for you to do that. And as a congresswoman, as a congresswoman, 
you should not be just revealing your most vulnerable self to the public like this, AOC. And I'm not being mean. I'm being honest. No one in her corner is telling her this. And she's looking at the, you know, the, the number of people that show up to her Instagram live or the people that, you know, retweet it and comment in the comment section. She's looking at that thinking that what she's doing is a positive thing. What she's doing is a good thing, but it's not. And so for her own mental health, uh, you know, and her own, uh, you, you know, safety and, and, and I want her to get help. But also, you know, Jason Woodlock, who I follow on, t- on Twitter, he tweeted something that. I agree with 100% and, and needs to be uh, uh, taken into account. So let me go ahead and find Jason's tweet because I thought this was really, really profound the way he tweeted because it's, what's, it, it's exactly what I, I've been feeling for the past couple of days. And he tweeted this. Think this through. American kids grow up in zip codes where shootings are daily occurrences. Murders happen six to ten times a year. Not uncommon to be forced into a gang. Our politicians do little to protect them and really speak of them. But January 6th was 9-11 to AOC. Get the F out of here. My sentiments exactly. My sentiments exactly. Yes, it was probably traumatic being in there and having people rush into the, the Capitol. But regular Americans go through things like, things like this all the time. Literally all the time. I just told you that I was jumped, but I'm not on Instagram crying and, 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 and you know and airing how I feel to the world all the time. And see what I really think happened at the Capitol, really. And this is not just AOC; this is all those politicians because they have been speaking about the the U.S. Capitol incident, calling it a riot, a, 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 an insurrectionist, calling these people domestic terrorists. But the language has really been flamboyant, regard, you know, describing the people that uh, stormed the Capitol. But I think these politicians were reminded that they are not untouchable. That's what I think happened. And that's what I think is driving all of this insane rhetoric. They were reminded for the first time in probably years that they are not untouchable because they probably feel untouchable. I mean, that's the only explanation I have for as to why Congress seems to be so, you know, unproductive, you would have to not care about people. And you would have to be emboldened by the fact that you think nothing is ever going to happen to you. Because for years, nothing has ever happened to these people. And so what happened at the Capitol, that was the first time where they realized, oh my God, I'm touchable. Like, people can touch me. The first time they realized that. And it scared the hell out of them. And so now they're using this supercharged language so that they can go and use the the, the tools of the government to craft some legislation to protect themselves again so that they can feel better about moving through the world. That's what's happening to all of these politicians in general. But AOC has deeper problems that she needs to handle. But, you know, AOC, if you ever watch this video, Don't fall for the social media trap. You are not in a good space regardless of what people are telling you in the comment section, regardless of what people are DMing you on Twitter. You need help. And you might need to just step away from life as a politician because you can't represent people whining and crying the way that you are in public. People want their representatives to be clear-headed, to be honest, to be thinking about the ramifications of their, of their decisions. And if you are hysterical like this, you know, you, you're you going to lose your support amongst people who are going to vote for you. Or you should, you know, lose support. People might like you so much that, you know, they'll just ride it out. But you should lose support. And so um, I just want to leave this story with one thing here, which is Teddy Roosevelt was given a speech and he was shot. And he was hit by that bullet. And he proceeded to finish the speech. My, have our politicians uh, have fallen. 